Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Awesome. So as you guys may know, we hosted a migration challenge this year to encourage the developer and de development community to start creating and thinking about games about specific immigration and migration issues. Um, obviously, it's a real hot topic this year, lots of things in the news. Um, we really wanted to encourage the game community to get involved with presenting solutions and thinking about ways to encourage dialogue around this topic. Um, so this was a, a challenge that we produced. Oh, sorry. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. There you go. Oh, boy. It's, ge it's getting intimate. <laughs> so we, we decided to host this challenge to really engage um, the global developer community in creating games around migration. And so today we have a, a panel of several of the participants. Um, first up, we have our winner, Constantine. He's going to be presenting his game uh, shortly. And um, his, his game was called Next Up Weinbach. Is that the correct pronunciation? Weinbach. Uh, yes. Um, and so he's going to talk a little bit about his winning concept and share a little bit about that. We also have um, Jean Baltova at the end, who was one of our judges on the panel. Um, and she'll talk a little bit about her experience kind of judging and evaluating the games for this competition. Um, and then in the middle, we have Deborah and Jessica, who worked on um, also a, a, a submitting a, um, for this competition, came in as finalists, didn't win, but they're going to share a little bit about their experiences with that. Um, so I don't want to take too much time up with the intro because we do have some great presentations coming and then we'll have a little bit of a panel discussion afterwards. So with that, I'd like to introduce Constantine. And you don't Hi. Okay, now my microphone is working. Okay, so uh, hi, my name is Konstantin. I just arrived yesterday from Germany, from Berlin, and I work at a small company. It's called Plan Politik, and we design interactive methods to teach about politics and uh, political education uh, things. So usually we've done it face to face. We've only designed uh, simulation games, which uh, are a face to face uh, interactive method, which I uh, explain a in a little bit. Um, we are like 12 people, and yeah, usually what we do is we um, invite groups or go to schools, universities, and uh, come up with a political process, for example, uh, United Nations climate change um, negotiations, and it's like a role-playing game. Students each um, are assigned with a role, and together they have to uh, come up with a, a solution, for example, climate change or development policy or also uh, migration policy. And uh, three years ago, so this is a typical uh, setting of a face-to-face -face simulation game, uh, three to four years ago, um, I told my bosses uh, that we should do it uh, not only face-to-face, -face, but also do it in an uh, online environment. So it can be played also uh, like independent of time and location. But also maybe what it works really well today is that we do a blended learning format so people are actually playing while they are online and uh, also chatting and uh, voting on the computer um, so we came up with the scenario that's our um, simulation game engine how we call it where you can um, put all sorts of different uh, content into so people can play different uh, topics in, a, in an online environment and um, one day we got a call from our partner it's the State Institute of uh, Political Education of the state of Saxony in Germany. And um, they said they had a huge problem uh, in that state with like populism and right-wing uh, um, xenophobia. So uh, what happened in uh, 2015, there was a huge uh, refugee crisis in uh, the European Union, um, which was also a crisis in the European Union before it was just a crisis in the Mediterranean Sea because a lot of people died in the Mer uh, Mediterranean Sea. But in 2015, uh, our uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel said she would uh, welcome also the people uh, from Syria and Afghanistan on the Balkan route. So the blue thing is different uh, routes where the uh, migrants were uh, coming. And the blue route is just from the land through the, the, the Balkan countries. <coughs> so um, our partner called us, and they said um, they have a huge problem. Uh, with like uh, right-wing populists, they got a lot of uh, momentum in that space because a lot of um, citizens felt like their their voice wasn't really heard, and they were joining uh, to or like uh, moving to to the very far uh, right, 
and a lot of uh, these right-wing parties um, evolved. The strongest, the biggest one is the Alternative for Germany, they call themselves, um, the AFD. And there was just one um, result of an election. So you see the very right, this is the alternative uh, for, uh, Alternative for Deutschland. And they haven't been in the parliament of this state. And then there was a new election, and from all of a sudden, they were the second uh, strongest force in the parliament of that state. So it's a, it's a quite big problem. And um, the State Institute asked us what, how we can maybe solve this and educate young people with a game about this uh, problem, because there have been um, a lot of prejudices um, amongst not only uh, older people, also younger people, like politicians. They just talk. They're not listening. They don't care what the people want. Um, and also about the media they are lying. So we came up with a, a concept about how to use uh, our scenario on game engine to create a game with, uh, yeah, make, uh, makes young people, like students, 16 uh, plus from the age, um, to talk about this. And um, this is, yeah, Weichenbach. So our scenario, our game scenarios, you, you have a little fictitious uh, town in Germany in, in the state of Saxony, it's like 60,000 inhabitants, and uh, the scenario is that uh, 500 refugees are coming into the city, and they now need to be distributed in the city. And um, the game includes all different actor groups. For example, um, there's town hall <laughs> factions, and then there's citizen groups, and then there's also a press team. And all these groups are played by students in an online environment, and the goal is to find um, an accommodation, where should they stay? Should they stay in the center of the city or should they stay somewhere out in the industrial area? And how will it be financed? So they have to find together a, a solution. And uh, this is how the interface looks. So you see it looks a little bit like a social network. Uh, you see your role. Um, you see it's, it's, uh, it's structured in different game phases. So phase one is read who you are learn your objective, uh, what kind of background do you have, are you unemployed, um, maybe you're, uh, you're on the right side of the uh, political uh, uh, spectrum, and um, you have a chat on the left, and then you also have uh, press releases. It's all in German, I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, just, uh, yeah, I hope you still get it. Um, and you have the information area, you just see uh, the different options, what should be decided on. And it's all text-based, and people chat, and uh, it's all anonymous. It's played in the classroom. So um, people are sitting in front of their computers and um, anonymous. So you don't know who the other ones are uh, being played by. So it creates a really nice and fun atmosphere. Uh, the students really uh, enjoy it. And uh, can I see the time? Like, how much time do I have? <coughs> I'm, I'm good? OK, so I, I, just, uh, so I can uh, talk about the different game mechanics a little bit uh, better. Uh, how did we manage to integrate all these uh, prejudices, like the politi uh, politicians are only talking, uh, the citizens are just uh, um, not really um, taken care of. So this is the uh, decision-making process of the faction. So if you're a member of the faction group, uh, you have on the right side, you have like a, a option where you, you can suggest to the mayor where you want the refugees to go, and you discuss it on the left with your faction members. So it's a, it's a group phase. We like talking, two to three people are talking, reading. I come from this area, I have this job and um, my background. Um, so they, they uh, exchange arguments and um, together they create a proposal which they then, uh, then send to the mayor. And um, so this is the, what the factions are doing. <coughs> and then in the end, they are uh, meeting in the Rathaus, which means like a town hall, um, and actually come up with a solution. So. Uh, where should they stay, and how will this accommodation being financed? And um, the citizen groups are also playing a, a crucial role because a lot of these citizens, they think nobody is really listening to them. So what we added into the game is like a, a crowd meter, like a satisfaction level. So all the different uh, citizens group can, can, while the game is running, enter how, how satisfied are they with the political um, decision-making process. So they see what the political parties uh, send to the mayor and then can, um, yeah, can uh, adjust their level of uh, satisfaction. And so also dialogue between politicians and uh, the citizen groups um, is being created. 
and the crowd meter, the satisfaction level is all the time in the game on the very top. So at the moment, everybody's quite unhappy. Um, yeah, and the politicians, are, the, like the students who play the politicians are really like, why are you unhappy? We do what we can. And so while they are playing, they understand, OK, well, it's not so easy to just come up with the, the best solution. So that's really a, a good learning for everyone. Uh, also, if you, if you see a friend like being desperate about finding the best solution and everybody's still unhappy, so it, uh, it cre creates an, a fun dynamic. Um, yeah, and then you have the press group, which uh, also like uh, writes articles and then uh, releases it um, on, the, on the marketplace, which is like the, the dashboard of the game. So uh, you, you also see uh, what, how, how the opinion changes with the different kinds of uh, media coverage. Um, and the teacher really doesn't do so much during the game. It's just working as an observer. All the game phases just run um, on its own, or the game run runs on its own. Uh, the moderation is also part of so the, the mayor is also, the mayor group is also played by the students. So it's all self-organized in a way. So the teacher is just sitting there and um, has like, sees where the, uh, how the activity goes. You see in the middle there's a, a, a break, a game break. Because um, the teacher's also given some questions, like what has happened, um, answer some questions, reflect on the actions being taken, for example. <coughs> and um, I heard that teachers apparently hate dashboards, but we have a dashboard for the teacher. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we also, what we add into the game is you see there's these, uh, the text that's uh, text that has been also, it's a reflection of each student what has happened in the game. Uh, like, why did this outcome happen? Why, uh, why is my role uh, thinking this way? So uh, it's very important for us to also make the people reflect on the uh, game's events. And yeah, that's uh, this uh, section. OK, so um, that's it. OK, okay great. So um, next we have Jessica Fiorini and Deborah Everett Lane, who are our finalists for this competition as well. They have a presentation to share, and then we're going to do a quick um, panel after this just to discuss their experiences. This is what you get for Google Slides. <laughs> ah. I know. You guys want to share notes? That's awesome. Um, I don't know if we can. Let's see. Mm. Let's do presenter mode, no? No! All right. And then for the new guys, reset. Okay. 
Hello. <laughs> um, I'm Deborah Everett Lane. I'm Jessica Fury. Um, so I'm a content and experience designer uh, and an educator and a storyteller. Uh, I'm currently assistant director of special projects at the Museum of Natural History. And uh, for any of you who were here at 4 o'clock, I actually worked with Nick on Come Out and Play. I run the Come Out and Play Family Day Festival, which is a set of games specifically geared to kids and families. And I'm a free range game designer. Um, people hire me to come in uh, and design a game from concept to delivery. And I've done uh, educational games for companies like Lego or McGraw Hill, and fun games for companies like Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. And I design everything from apps and internet games to VR experiences. Yep. Yep. Um, so uh, I'll start by saying just uh, unlike uh, Constantine, uh, we did not have a game already <laughs> that we were working on when uh, we found out about the Games for Change challenge. Uh, but we thought it was a really interesting challenge, and we've designed a lot of games together. Uh, both freelance and when we were working together at ESI Design. Uh, and so we thought it was a great opportunity to, to sort of flex our creative muscle and because it's an important topic. And so that's how we came to do the challenge together. And so first we started off by really sort of digging into the problem of, you know, how do you help people understand the challenges and the benefits of immigration and integration? Uh, and so three of the things that we really wanted to uh, be able to focus on when we were thinking about our game design we're first, uh, helping people understand what you really mean by integration and all of the sort of complexity of what an integrated immigrant group means. Uh, and so we had done a bunch of research and these are sort of what you're seeing here are sort of some six of the sort of like the main parameters that people or main metrics that people often think about when they're talking about integration. Um, so language proficiency, obviously, how well is the integrant, are the immigrants um, able to uh, learn and and then become fluent in the native lang in the local language, uh, socioeconomic attainment. Are they able to get jobs, improve their education, and then gradually improve their socioeconomic status? Residential locale. So are they segregated or are they integrated into larger, more diverse communities? Uh, political proficiency. To what extent are they being becoming aware and part of the political the local political process? which means certainly being put on the road to citizenship, but in general feeling like they are empowered to be part of the polit local political process. Um, social interaction, so how much, you know, are they isolated? Are their families with them? Uh, are they integrated socially into the local community? And then just cultural diffusion sharing, you know, uh, how much are, is the local community getting to know that immigrant group and are they getting to know other, you know, other groups in that area? So understanding really the measures of integration, and then learning about specific immigrant groups, because we didn't want this to be in the abstract. So really thinking about how can we incorporate elements, aspects of real immigrant cultures into the game. And that means religion, traditions, language, um, pop music, you know, all of these different aspects so that people could get to know greater immigrant diversity. Uh, and then using that to think about how do you build community, right? So it's like not thinking about these immigrants uh, in the, you know, as individuals or just as families, but as part of a community and working to think about how the game could help people see them as part of the community and then translate that into community action for themselves. So um, as we're designing any game, we had that first slide to say these are the, some of the things that we were working with in the, uh, and how we were going to see if we were successful or not. In order to design mechanics, we wanted to have a certain principles in, in place that every time we design something, do they match to these uh, set of goals that we've set for the design. So we believe that immersion results in empathy, that if we put someone in, in the shoes of an immigrant or are surrounded by immigrants and have this interaction with their culture, that the more you learn, the better off you are in, in understanding. We wanted to make sure that everyone got treated equally, that there are no villains in this story. Even if there's a grumpy dude in your block, if he's not a villain, he's just cranky. So making sure that everyone got treated humanely. Um, we wanted to make sure we could expand uh, cultural understanding through a diverse cast uh, of characters. So, you know, we're New Yorkers. We interact with you know, thousands of different cultures a day, and not everyone in the world gets to do that, but everyone in America gets to do that. So how do we make sure that we're not focusing on one type of interaction or one type of group? And we also wanted to make sure that there was, even though it's fun and it's sort of zany, the characters we may have, that there's real-world conflicts and solutions uh, presented in the game 
that hopefully people that play the game can then use in their own life. So maybe there's just a tools of interaction of how you talk to someone who does not have language proficiency, or how to just understand that people do want to participate in local government, but they may not know how. Um, we wanted to make sure that not only is this a game that would be fun for anyone to play, but it can be used as a teaching tool by schools and, and communities who are trying to work on integration so that there are real learning metrics that we're trying to hit that, um, that can be used in a lesson or just as an exploratory uh, platform. And obviously, I'm, as a game designer, I don't believe educational games sh uh, should be boring. I think that it should be fun and approachable and have a great narrative that brought people along. <coughs> So how do you play? Um, Welcome Home is a mixture of what I like to say, Stardew Valley, Papers, Please, and Fallout Shelter. So it's, uh, which, yeah. So you mush all those together. Um, and what you have is an open-ended game that's really focused on community and can also do political awareness through narrative and just through main interactions. So we don't want to hit anyone over the head with giant like text box of, these are the 18 things that an immigrant has to go through in order to become a citizen, and it's bigger list than that. But how to like fold all that in to say that a happy community um, can, uh, can learn new skills, or that a happy community is a good base for people to become integrated. So you know, for Stardew Valley, you've got this community-based game where everything's, uh, you, know, you have to bring um, presents to neighbors and have a conversation. Everything's sort of time-based, but it's definitely community-focused. Something like Papers, Please, as I'm sure everyone's familiar with, is how to explore our deeply political and, uh, and divisive um, topic through gameplay that maybe you don't even know what it is until you're done, like, well, oh, that was kind of crazy. And then if you think about Fallout Shelter, you've got that, um, that community that's based on interdependencies, and you've got sort of a cross-section of the whole place as they grow and build. Um, no oh, oh, okay, let's go, okay, okay. <laughs> so we're New Yorkers, right? So for us, the, you know, the game environment is the apartment building, right? I mean, this is where we encounter a lot of people, like the subway also, yes, but definitely the apartment building. Okay, so it's not too big, it's not too small, it's a little bit run down, it's in a changing neighborhood, it conveniently has a great papaya, a, a papaya king on the corner for you, right? And so the idea is that this is the world of the game, and that it starts off and all of the residents of the, of the building are all American. They're, they're citizens. They've been living there for years. Some of them, some of the families may have been there for generations. And then an immigrant family moves in. And then another immigrant family moves in. And maybe some of the old timers who've been there for a while start to get a little disgruntled. Maybe they feel a little bit uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable with change. They're uncomfortable with, staying, with new people that they haven't encountered before. The immigrants move in and they're unsure. Maybe they have trouble with the language. They feel anxious about coming to a new place, right? So everybody is a little bit unsure and they're all just trying to get along. And you, the player, you play as the super. So some of you may recognize Schneider from One Day at a Time. So the super is, you know, he's, he's the consummate captain of the ship, right? He's the handyman, he's the confidant, he's the event planner, he's the tr problem solver, right? And what he's most concerned about is that everyone in the building is getting along. Right? He doesn't want to be bothered, so people you know, have to be able to pay the rent, they have to you know, not be bothering their neighbors too much, they have to all be getting along, getting the stuff done that they need to do. And so that's, that's you, you're the super, you're in charge of making sure that everyone in the building, as new people move in and other people move out, that everyone is basically getting along. Okay. So we did wireframes. Yeah. Uh, I just, so this is the game. It's glorious. Uh, but in order to express idea when we're doing a concept deck, usually we just do wireframes. And what I liked about this contest, or any contest, is that you find out there are multiple solutions to approach any problem. Um, and so we, we submitted these wireframes. So one of our problems were, what is the scale of this game? I mean, could, do we want to attack the whole global problem? Do we want to just attack it in the country? But again, we thought that we needed a microcosm of a little bit of everything. So therefore, you're really uh, butted up with the adjacencies of different type of communities and different type of cultural types. So we chose the apartment building. Now, as you see in the apartment building, this is part of the super's dashboard, where they could sort of check in and see if there are any empty apartments, how is the general stability and happiness of each resident, um, who needs some tasks done. And so everything you're doing, you're look at this one, like this, this view to say, what is the general okayness of my building? 
because more people are going to try to move in. And maybe you have an empty apartment and you can let people in, or maybe you don't. So this is a real good snapshot of what, how your building is doing. Our next uh, dive into that was, OK, so now you've got this apartment building. What's happening inside the apartments? In order to figure out you know, how your <coughs> residents are doing, you have to go talk to them and socialize. This is an example of just a regular narrative moment, moment where you're going to go in and check in on a resident and say, how you doing? By checking with residents, you start making connections between people. You start figuring out you know, not just beyond regular apartment <coughs> maintenance, which you have to do as a super, but perhaps who needs work and who needs a babysitter and can you connect those two folks? Or you know, what is the problem with 2B and why don't they like 2B and what's the deal here? So by the more interactions with uh, residents that you have, the more opportunities to make bridges, to uh, do tasks, and to sort of join your community together. Another um, feature of what the, the super can do is they can plan events on a calendar. Now, the calendar may just be, you know, here's some job training, here is a potluck. But we can also celebrate birthdays and other celebrations. And what that do, does is also gives us an opportunity to sort of uh, show the player different cultural aspects. So you might have a party that's a, a karaoke party. And as you go, you learn a song in a different language. Or you may go to a potluck, and all the food there is uh, brought by a different cultural type. So what the, the a calendar does is organize and sort of plan out the type of ways to interact as, in a group from resident to a group of res, uh, rather the super to a group of residents rather than just one to one. Um, oh, and everything is you know time based. So what happens is that you know day one happens and it lasts X amount of hours, and day two and day three. And the super has a regular rhythm where he gets up in the morning or she. At 8 a.m., they probably have to do some tasks. They probably plan some things out, and then they go back. So everything uh, is time-based and cannot just be done all at once. Another feature that happens in the building is there are these common spaces where all of the residents can hang out. So there's a laundry room, there's a community garden, and then there's a lobby. In the lobby, there's a bulletin board where help wanted signs are going up or announcements or different ways that immigrants can get skills to either, you know, for job training to find a new job or language skills or just find out how to participate in their local community uh, government, whether that's the community government of the building or further outside in their neighborhood. And this is a way that you can, as a player, can pick up, you know, small little tasks or say that these things are open to you. Uh, finally, we've got the overarching dashboard view where the super can look at each resident. And as you see, we've got those six metrics that we discussed up, uh, up front of successful integration. So how is each resident doing? Do they feel comfortable? Do they have some friends in the building? Are they getting out enough? Can they pay rent? How are they feeling about where they are? And we think that you know, some people may move out because they're disgruntled, but most people, if they're moving out, maybe they, they're, they've started a new family, have gotten married. Or maybe they did uh, get citizenship and they've got a new job and have to move away. So what we want is to bring this building as a great launching point for integration and, um, and success. OK, so how does it end? The game doesn't end, right? Because immigration and integration is an ongoing process. Right? So that the game, it, the way we've conceived of the game, there would be successive waves of immigrants from different, from different nations, which is what really happens. So you start off with one wave of immigrants, and then another wave of immigrants would come in. And more than that, we feel that you, know, you could tune this so that whatever community you live in, you could set it to have specific waves of immigrants come in to sort of reflect the historical and actual circumstance. So, you know, if it were New York City, it could be waves of you know, Irish and German followed by Italian and Jews, right? That type of thing, so that it really reflects your experience in your community. And that the game is also designed, as just said, to reflect change over time. So that it's not just about the immigrants move in to the building and then you make them happy and then they stay that way, right? They become citizens, they move on, they intermarry, you know, families grow, you start with a small family and then family members come over. And even the super gets to change, right? The super can get married, you know, the super can have a family, maybe the super marries one of the residents in the building, right? So that to reflect the fact that things change over time. And so it's open-ended. And at a certain point, you would maximize the number of sort of like new building improvements you could have or type of calendar events. But then it becomes all about dealing with the ongoing waves of immigrants and constantly trying to maximize the happiness of everyone in the building. 
And so in terms of the impact, what we were hoping to achieve by designing the game this way was first to create a platform that would really promote empathy, help people build empathy. Uh, again, as Jess said in the beginning, you know, no one is the villain here. You can't possibly resolve all of the conflicts and there are reasons why people don't get along and you do your best. But by bringing it down to a very personal level to really try to help people empathize with all of the different groups, both the old timers and the newcomers. Um, and again, reality, by grounding it in real immigrant groups and real problems of integration uh, that, that people face every day. Uh, and by making it focus on the community. So it's not just about a single family or a single individual. It's about you want to maximize, as a super, you want to maximize each individual happiness, but also the happiness of the building. And there's no way to resolve these problems without having people, having the residents work together, right? Everything is based on community solutions. And so the hope then was, would be by building empathy, grounding in reality, building the idea of community solutions, that you would then inspire people to be able to translate this into their own life and be able to promote then integration solutions out in the real world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. And I will invite all of you to sit back down. We'll have a little discussion. So um, before we jump into kind of some panel questions for you guys, I want to ask Gina, uh, Gina um, about her experience judging this competition. Obviously, we, we had a lot of different um, submissions and they were all kind of touching on the subject in different ways. Um, and so I'd love to hear kind of some of the challenges that you faced with evaluating these and, and, and reviewing them. Uh, thank you, Emily. I'm Jana Batalova from the Migration Policy Institute. Um, it's a research organization um, in Washington, so we're in the midst of policy development, policy evaluation. So when in uh, when Emily contacted us, I thought that, well, what do we know about uh, vi video games? And then I thought, well, since I don't really play video games, if, if I find a video game that kind of excites me, you meet the lowest denominator. <laughs> uh, so I was a good person to, to jump on board on that. But <clears throat> as the institute, we are interested in understanding what are the trends? Why they are happening? Why people go from one country to another? And what can governments do? Like Constantine was saying, that governments often are restricted in what they can do in that particular moment of time. So in, in our um, evaluation of this uh, uh, submitted uh, game designs, and I was happy to see that uh, Emily said that it was one of the largest submissions that they had in, in the history of uh, uh, this challenge. Um, one of the things we wanted to, um, to make sure that the, the, the winning concept understood that it's a complex problem. You know, it's a complex problem with no simple solution. And there will be that immigration and integration is challenging. It can bring a lot of positive aspects, but it can also bring challenges. The pressures, the financial, emotional, uh, community pressures that immigration uh, uh, comes with or immigrants come with. We wanted to have that sense of realism. And what, what you mentioned too was, was extremely important is that um, uh, the, some people will be the, un, unhappy with what's happening or how fast something is happening. Uh, but also what, what, what community, what governments can do, uh, what individual citizens can do in order to smooth the process because it's a two way street integration it uh, is a two-way street and uh, both sides have to be involved and committed to the success of, of the, uh, the process. So these were kind of the elements that we were looking at in, in, um, in the uh, in design. Um, are, they, are either immigrants or the receiving side do not uh, represent it um, as agents rather than as, as victims? Do they have um, um, inadvertently if a video uh, uh, design, um, video game design suggested that this group of immigrants invaded an island, well, that even though from in, in, if you look at the game, it can be a kind of, well, someone lands on an island, it might look like fun, but, the, but in the political context, it can be uh, construed in a very, very di different terms than we would want that game to, to portray. 
Um, the game design, the, the, the challenge was focused on integration. So the uh, integration is different from immigration, immigration of why people come, how they come, and integration is what happens to them after they arrive and their, their impact on the, uh, the communities. So some of the, uh, the, the game designs, they, they focus more on, okay, what kind of visas do I need to apply? You know, what's the, the role of the employers, the role, uh, role of lawyers in that process? That's not the integration aspect. So um, it, it was great to see that in, the, in, in your designs, you really uh, dug deeper to understand what are the, ele what are the uh, dimensions of integration, linguistic, uh, socioeconomic, political, uh, and as well as what is the role of the receiving communities that, you know, to, to make sure that immigrants uh, learn the ropes, uh, learn the rules, uh, become integrated, and in the process they can also can move out and progress, uh, which I like very much about your concept that, that eventually people leave because they're, they're uh, they can move on. They achieve the mobility, either residential uh, or socioeconomic and political mobility. So for us, it was a, a fascinating uh, concept that reminded us that even though we, we as the Institute do not approach uh, uh, solving the problem as a, from the you know, game uh, entertainment aspect, we approach it also from the educational point of view. Because the goal of our institute is to educate the public, educate policymakers, to help people to make sense of what's happening um, in the world with regard to immigration and integration, and uh, uh, help them see their role and their position and the dilemmas that they and their communities will be facing in dealing with immigrants. Good, thank you. Great. So. Um, Given the fact that this is such a loaded topic and obviously is, is a topic that really touches almost every community, i um, curious to hear from kind of both the teams uh, how you guys worked towards building empathy within the experience, knowing that it's obviously, you know, there, there are certain sides that maybe wouldn't necessarily be empathetic and how you approach that in the design. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I think that in order to be true to empathy, you have to understand that not everyone's going to like your answer. Like the, the thing about empathy is that it can't all be roses. It can't be that we just show up and everyone gets along, and that's how life works. Um, for us, being uh, this sort of focus as a super in this world where everyone's sort of connected, and you're so the super is sort of this blank slate that you're now entering the world as yourself, and you're being surrounded by. Um, a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of concerns that may or may not be yours. And that's a real thing about empathy, right? How are, do you gain some sort of insight or knowledge or care about someone's concern that may not or concern you or even thing that you've thought about? So what we try to do by making this building is that you are so uh, closely tied to everyone there that it sort of forces you to say, OK, what's really happening here? And maybe there's a political reason why these two neighbors don't get along, and it's not just personality. Or maybe that you know the reason why this person is not feeling great is because they don't have the language skills in order to make it happen. So what we're trying to do is make connections between why integration has so much tension uh, 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 involved with it. And just sort of highlighting those alone through gameplay and through interaction and through great writing, you would have a way into thinking about the problem from someone else's perspective. I, I, the other thing that I would add is also by, by putting the super in the position where the super has to talk to everybody. Right? It's not just, it doesn't become a list of abstract tasks. Like this person doesn't get along with this person because of X and then you fix X and then they get along. But you have to actually go and talk to them and try to make them into real characters. And then the super builds relationships with them and might build stronger relationships with some people than with other people. But that relationship aspect also helps to build the sense of empathy. I think that the, in general with simulation games and role playing games, you always play in a group of more or less people you already know, like your schoolmates or uh, students. Or so. so you already feel that you are talking to someone that you know. And um, it's really also fascinating with role playing. You tell someone, oh, now you're Donald Trump or anything. And it takes literally one second for a person to become this person. Like role playing is so, it's so easy to, to, to dive into a different character. 
and to see someone or to, to, to know you're talking to someone that's that's the multiplayer aspect of this of, of this game is so strong because talking to other people and staying with other people who are not afraid of saying oh I don't like foreigners for example is very like usually these things are usually forbidden to say all these prejudices no, nobody dares to, to, to say oh I don't like they should go home I don't like they're all idiots what you know these all these horrible things you can and then if you, if you put people in the game now you're a right-wing politician it takes them like a minute and they're very like open-minded young kids but of course they've already had it in their head these, these arguments so they just write it in the chat and you say okay that's interesting and then the, the chat it takes five minutes and the chat is full of these um, xenophobic uh, um, arguments so um, that's also it's an interesting lesson for, for them to learn it's like oh it's really it, it doesn't take much to become one of these people and uh, to, to uh, talk like that that's a great aha moment right is that having that realization so we have uh, just about two minutes left and so I think I'm gonna ask both teams to share what are the next steps for for your game project Constantine Okay, so who won ten thousand dollars to put into his game? <laughs> yeah. So uh, as uh, politics uh, should be uh, complicated, the same happens with our game. So uh, the game is at the moment on hold because some people at the state institute who funded us um, said it's not uh, reflecting the um, up-to-date uh, reality. And they also, I think, got a little bit excited because we told them we won an award in New York. So they're very like, oh, it's very official. Everything has to be super uh, realistic. So we actually Sorry about that. <laughs> we, we can take it back and give it to Deborah and Jess. No, please. Um, no, actually, so they get us, gave us even a little bit more money so we can put um, uh, more work into it to make it more uh, up to date. So it's not about like distributing them, where should they stay, but what's happening now, the like, up to date version of integration measures. So at the moment, it's not being played, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully in fall, it will be released. Some new iterations. Yes. Great, great, great. And Jess and Deborah. This is, our next step is right here. <laughs> um, no, I mean, this was for a contest. It was a great thing for us to do together. If any of you guys want to build it, let us know. Um, but I, I don't. I mean, we, we, we would love to see it built. You know? Yeah. And so, you know, if anyone is interested, seriously, or knows somebody who might be interested, we are happy to talk with anybody who's interested in that. Mm -hmm. Great, and with that, we have about nine seconds left, so I think we'll wrap up, but thank you. I want to thank all of our panelists, and the presentations today were great. Um, thank you, guys.